And I was involved in an impure habit that, that I never mentioned to anybody. In my spirit, I knew this was wrong. I was struggling with some things morally that no one else knew about. I have to say with Paul, there were things I wanted to do, I didn't. And the things I didn't want to do, I did. I was at a loss for where to go with some of the temptations that I was facing. I didn't know if I was the only person who was struggling with that. How do you deal with those influences that just keep coming back? There were certain pictures for some reason that kept coming back to my mind. And then I learned about the importance of taking background. In Hebrews 13, 4, it states, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. God's judgment awaits those who engage in sexual activity outside of marriage. But Scripture reveals that this judgment does not only apply to the acts of sin. Jesus stated that we will be held accountable for our thought life as well. I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You know, I was involved in an impure habit that, that I never mentioned to anybody. In my spirit, I knew this was wrong. I knew this was wrong. I knew this was wrong. Knowing that moral impurity will be judged, we may desire its absence from our life. But what do we do when it comes visiting anyway? Where do we go for help when lust infiltrates our thought life and drives us to do things we know are wrong? I was struggling with some things morally that no one else knew about. At that stage, I was at a loss for where to go with some of the temptations that I was facing. I didn't know if I was the only person who was struggling with that. I was exposed to images when I was young and in the military. I mean, they were just all over the walls. And I have to say with Paul, there were things I wanted to do, I didn't. And the things I didn't want to do, I did. How do you deal with those types of influences that just keep coming back, that just keep coming back? Just keep In Romans chapter 7 it says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then the glorious answer is given, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer to overcoming sin of any kind is found in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that without the shedding of blood there is no remission or forgiveness for sins. And because Jesus shed his perfect blood for us while dying on the cross, he made eternal forgiveness available to us. However, this reality only provides benefit to us as we participate in it. Romans 8.1 says it this way, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Freedom from condemnation only comes from being in Christ Jesus, where He becomes our very life and identity. Through His death on the cross, Jesus made a way for us to be free from sin. And through His resurrection, He made a way for us to operate by a new nature, His nature. But for us to experience the power of this reality, we must enter into it. We must, by faith, account that when Jesus died for sin on the cross, our sinful self died too. And when he rose from the dead, we were raised to a new life in him. Through this accounting process, Scripture calls this reckoning, we are able to experience now all that Jesus accomplished 2,000 years ago, the death of the old man and the life of the new man. This is what liberates us from the dictates of sinful passions, realizing that, in Christ, our sinful self has been terminated and that it has been replaced by God's indwelling life. Now, does this mean there will no longer be temptation? Unfortunately, the lure of sin will always be present in this lifetime. Some have likened this to the law of gravity. If we walk off the edge of a building, the law of gravity will be there to pull us down. However, there's another law that is able to rise above the law of gravity, and that is the law of lift. When a bird spreads its wings and soars through the air, gravity is still in effect, but it doesn't stop the bird from flying because the winged creature has engaged in a law that transcends the law of gravity. By parallel, Scripture says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The first thing that really brought freedom was understanding the law of gravity and the law of aerodynamics. And that law of gravity is. It's like the law of sin, the downward pull of selfishness and lust. And the law of aerodynamics is like the upward lift of the power of God's Spirit. 
when we receive the power of God's Holy Spirit, it enables us to rise above the natural pull of sin. Walk in the Spirit, Scripture says, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When a person struggles with moral impurity, that exposes a detachment from God's power to overcome sin. If a person was never attached to begin with, the first step toward freedom is receiving the salvation of Christ. But if a believer finds themselves struggling with impurity, the answer is reckoning or concluding by faith that we are dead to sin because of Jesus' death and are alive to God because of Jesus' resurrection. When the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to this reality, it becomes a dynamic weapon against temptation. However, this all has to do with the solution for sin in relation to our spirit. But there's another part of us that needs answers regarding moral impurity, and that is the realm of our psychological, or our soul. There were certain pictures for some reason that kept coming back to my mind, uh, even when I would have victory. They were just there. And then I learned about the importance of taking back ground, that I had willingly yielded ground to Satan, and he took it. When we engage in immoral thoughts, we give Satan access into our soul. The more influence we allow him to have, the more ground in our soul he takes. If we desire freedom, that ground needs to be taken back. But how? The process is identified in James 1.21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. The first thing identified in this verse is something we are supposed to remove lay apart all filthiness. God calls us to remove those things from our life that encourage moral compromise. This includes what we listen to, what we watch, and the people we associate with. Anyone or anything that lures us into morally impure thoughts or actions, we want to distance from our life. The next thing identified in James 1.21 is what needs to replace those things we just removed. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. When we get rid of that which is impure, we want to replace it by that which is pure. We want to build God's Word into the fabric of our being, where its truth is engrafted into our mind and received into our heart. We want to make this the habit of our life, producing a constant daily renewal of God's truth in our soul. As we do this, the influence of God takes up the ground where Satan's lies once occupied, causing us to no longer be victims of the enemy, but rather victors in the Lord. I can't tell you how freeing that was. It changed the course of my life. So that was a life-changing principle in my life.